So excited to be here. So I think this is a Fulador and GDG Kisuma meetup, right? Uh, and then, but we have more people. Oh, is this coming from me? I hear some noises. Okay, cool. Um, so I work at the Flutter Developer Relations team at Google. And uh, before actually I jump into that, I want to talk about how actually I ended up here. So I am originally from Turkey, as you can realize from my accent. Uh, this is a Turkish English accent, but I, right now I live in the United States. I moved here five years ago. Uh, before I moved to here and I joined Google, I was actually a GDG organizer and a woman tech makers organizer. So like this meetup, right? And so when Maureen asked me about my bio, she asked me, hey, yeah, son, can you send me a bio? And I said, okay, what should I say? And I said, oh, actually, I used to be a GDG organizer, so I am from the community, so I know this. And I need, oh, hi, Johan. I, I see more people. All right, so I did a lot of meetup with GDGs and women tech makers, and of course I had another full time job, and but I was spending a lot of time with that. And when people ask me, Nilay, why are you actually spending your time for that, like for those meetups? Why, why do you really do that? And then I didn't know the answer. I just like. I really like doing that because I was meeting other people, I was learning things, I was giving talks, and then I was talking to other companies and they were like, oh, can I come to your meetup and can I speak? And I was like, of course. And I realized, oh, okay, this is actually a great opportunity for me because I get to know a lot of companies, people, and then technologies and everything. And this actually, like, this is great. And then uh, a few years later, and this is all happening in Istanbul, so it was GDG Istanbul. And a few years later, uh, my husband found a job in the United States, and we were like, okay, we are going to move to the United States. And I was like, okay, why, I, why did I do all of the, this thing, right? Like, we are, I'm leaving everything in Turkey, now I am moving, moving to a new country. I have no idea, I don't know anyone, what am I going to do there, and why I did all that stuff? And then, anyway, we moved here, and I was looking for a job. Yeah, I have a computer science background. I was looking for a job. And then, you know, you have all the imposter syndrome because this is a new country. I This is not my native language. I don't know anything. Why would people hire me? Why, what am I going to do? There are so many things, right? And then I was also talking to friends uh, at Google who are like originally helping for the GDGs and everything. And then I told them, hey, I left GDG Istanbul and then now I'm in US and then and I'm looking for a job. I, I don't know if you know anyone looking for some uh, computer scientists, I'm just looking for something. I also did some meetup stuff. And then they were like, oh, actually, we're looking for a community manager. And then we heard that you did like good meetups in Turkey. Are you interested? And I'm like, what? Like, am I interested? Like, this is Google. Are you serious? And then, like, you don't even believe yourself, right? It is just like it is so unbelievable. And then I joined Google in 2006. It was the community manager job uh, in the ecosystem team. So I was working with the GDGs. And it is like when I was doing the, those GDGs and meetups and those community works, I never thought that this was going to help me to find a job in US, in a country, in a foreign company. And I never did that because I wanted to get a job at Google or I, I could ever imagine that, like, right? But it opened me a new door in a new country, which I had no idea what am I going to do. So. If, if, if you do things, if you if there are things that you really want to do, but you don't know why you are doing, or if you're doing really good, please do them. I encourage you to do them because you never you will never realize they're going to open you so many doors and they're going to create so many opportunities. So this is all going to be good. So do if you, there are things you like, please do and do them good. And then uh, after two years in the GDG team, uh, people all of a sudden in the community, they started talking about a technology called Flutter. Oh, like Flutter, can we actually want to have Flutter resources or we want to learn Flutter or Flutter courses? I was like, what is this? I had no idea. And then, of course, yeah, it was a technology from Google. And oh, it's a new, um, then it was only for mobile. Oh, it's a new mobile application. Uh, development tool and then oh this looks cool oh, it look you can build application for Android iOS 
this for all platforms. Wow, this is really cool. But also another interesting thing, there was a lot of uh, requests from the community. Like people were asking about Flutter actively. And I was like, oh wow, this seems really interesting. I think this is going to be a thing. And I started talking to Flutter team and then they were like, oh, actually we are, we are just creating a developer relations team and then we are looking for someone who knows about the community and then do stuff. And I joined Flutter team two years ago. And it was, I think, the best decision, in, again, in my life. Uh, so now I am in the Flutter team, in the developer relations team. And again, I do a lot of community thing, uh, but just for Flutter. So uh, now, OK, we, I can start talking about actually what Flutter is. So as you all know, Flutter is the new SDK from Google uh, that allows you to build uh, applications for mobile, web, and desktop from just one single code base. And what it means, like if we look at a few years back, when we look at the mobile, mobile application development uh, ways there was like there were two ways right you could either build a native application which like which is great because you build application for Android specifically and then iOS your application is really powerful really high performance you can do great things because you're building apps for exactly those devices um, or you could uh, pick one of the cross-platform uh, tools like FormGap, and then and you could easily and very fast uh, build applications. So the thing about that, so if you if you look at this picture, so this the left one represents a native application. So someone on the internet made this. So if you pick native application approach, so yes, you you build beautiful applications, high performance applications, and your application will be very powerful. Uh, but to be able to do that, it, the cost is a bit high because you have to maintain more than one project if you want your app work on different uh, platforms for Android, for iOS. You have to maintain two different projects. You have to have two like different developers or teams. For example, if you want to make a change on the Android, you need to make sure that it also works in the same in the iOS. So it is a bigger cost. But at the end, you can build a beautiful castle, but the cost would be high. Or if you say, oh, no, I don't have that much resources. I would, I'm just going to pick a cross-platform tool like PhoneGab or some uh, Adobe Air. and I will just build my application from one code base, and that's great. You can still have that. But the application you build is not actually a native application. It is a web application put in the native shell, so you, it, you, it can work on mobile. But the behavior might not be really good. It may be janky, some performance issues. It may not, You may not use all the power of the device. Um, so. At the end, the result may not be uh, what you wanted. So Flutter just comes in this place. It says, we offer you best of the both worlds. We allow you to build native applications, beautiful applications, high performance, high quality applications, but you're going to build it from just one single code base. You don't have to maintain different projects. And it's this beauty actually comes from the Flutter's um, uh, structure because Flutter is actually uh, working like an engine, like as you see in the light blue part, it's a, it's an engine uh, on Skia, and on top of that, there's a framework part, and it is all written by Dart, Dart programming language, and everything you see here, the widgets and rendering and animation gesture, everything is actually uh, widgets on Flutter. So everything comes on top of each other. This is why when you are building Flutter applications and if you realize some, oh, actually, I should have done it differently, it is so easy to come back from that for Flutter because everything is layered. And this is all thanks to Dart programming languages flexibility. And Dart is actually a programming language from Google. So uh, three engineers uh, from Google it, they were working in the Chrome team years ago, and they were like, how we can actually have the web performance and web quality in the, in the mobile devices? And then 
they started a project and they were like they were trying things and first they i think they used javascript and then but it the result what they were not expecting and then oh actually there's a programming language at google dart and we should look at that for multi-platform applications and then they started using dart they wrote flutter and then flutter now is what we have today so dart has been used for uh to building flutter but also to build Flutter applications, you are using that programming language. And all the Flutter speed is today actually coming from uh, because of Dart. So when we talk about uh, Flutter, we talk about these four pillars. Flutter is beautiful, productive, fast, and open. So Flutter is beautiful because it is designed to give you the uh, control every pixel on the device so it is so easy to build very beautiful user interfaces with flutter if you look at this application on the screen they're like the scrolls and the menus and then the beautiful designs and uh, it is all flutter and there are, these are all ready to use widgets so flutter use uh, flutter has a lot of ready to use material design widgets uh, and for iOS uh, that are Cupertino widgets, so it is very easy to build very nice user app user interfaces with Flutter. And on the Apple Store right now, there are some applications that actually won the best design award, and they are built with Flutter. If you want to check one of them as Reflectly on the App Store, and Flutter is fast because. The code compiles directly to the native code on the machine. So this is why the app users can use the all power of the device. So it works at 60 frames per second. Uh, and then everything you see on this application, the sample application, so there's an animation, there's an image, there's text, and everything comes on top of each other, and everything works very smoothly. And it is really productive because there are really nice features and developer-friendly tools from Flutter. One of them is, and of course, the most popular one, Hot Reload. And again, this is thanks to Dart, uh, just in time compilation. Um, so when usually uh, you build an application, and if you make any change, in the past, what you did is you have to rebuild the app to see the change. But right now, with the hot reload and these kind of things, you just see the changes in just a few seconds. You make a change on screen, and you see the changes on either emulator or on your device. Um, so this is actually gives a lot of flexibility and creativity because you're like, oh, I can actually try this. Oh, no, I can try another thing. I can try another thing. And it gives you a lot of uh, creativity. creativity. So there are some teams at Google, they rebuilt their applications with Flutter. And what they told us, they were three times productive comparing to past approaches. And this is huge, three times. And Flutter is open. So all the integrations you want to make on the Flutter app, you do through the packages. And all the packages are listed on um, pub start dev. And these packages are created by Googlers, but not only Googlers, also a lot of community members and companies created packages. For example, if you want to make a um, like map integration or something, you will be able to see a lot of packages that other people created, and they are listed on uh, on this PubDart dev. And this is the beauty of Flutter. So because this is the like collaboration, right? So someone needs something, they create a package, and then another person uses it, and then, oh, no, actually, I can also add this, so this will be useful to everyone, so they can add collaboratively uh, contribute to Flutter. And Flutter has a lot of stars on GitHub. It is growing because a lot of people are like really curious about Flutter and then they are coming and they're contributing. Um, right now there are, I think it is over 5,000, but I am not sure about this number. There are a lot of applications on Play Store and App Store and it is an open source project. So everyone is welcome to contribute to Flutter as well as the, the Flutter team. And animations, right? So you want your application to be beautiful. You want your applications, you want the users to use your application because it is really competitive. And for that, you usually use animations. And with Flutter, adding animations to your app is very easy. It's just a few lines of code because animations is also a library in Flutter. Um, so some there is a, a company called Drive. 
so they have an animation tool they made a tool so basically you can create animations for example you can create a human and you can play and then you can create a lot of movement and then you can easily put that uh, animation into your flutter app because they made a lot of great tools to make the integration easy um so there are this kind of company is also uh, doing a lot of nice tools that you can use with Flutter. And if you want to check some of your their uh, animation apps, I listed them here. Mother of Dashes is one of them. So people call me Mother of Dashes because I, I send Dash. A lot of Dash people, this is why they call me. But Dash is actually created by a team member in my team. And then there's also a history of everything app and a showcase app. You can see there are really nice animations built with Flutter. And of course, for web, so you want to reach out your, your users in all platforms, right? You also want to have a web application. But to create a web application, you have to meet some standards. Your app has to be fast. Your app has to be junk-free. Um, sh it should work minimum 60 frames per second. Or uh, it should work it should show the same consistent behavior in all platforms, in mobile, in uh, browser, or there are a lot of browsers and there are a lot of updates every day. So in every update, your web application should work uh, consistently. This is why web application, building web applications are a bit different than mobile. But thanks to, again, Dart, from the same code base, you can build a web application with Flutter. And there will be a lot of updates about uh, web. So there, there has been some updates. And then there will be a lot of updates about Flutter web in coming days. Uh, please follow Flutter Twitter address. You're going to see them. And if you want to see an example Flutter web application, please check out this uh, New York Times game. So they built it with Flutter. It works on web. They're a really nice application. And the game is fun. Uh, you can just see and try how it looks. And um, so there are lots of companies working for uh, using Flutter right now, like Alibaba. They created every web applications with Flutter, and then Capital One in US and Square made a uh, API, so you can use a payment API in the. Uh, Flutter applications and also the more exciting thing is there are a lot of team at Google they are using Flutter for their applications for example uh, the Google Home devices the one with the screen I think they called it Google Home Hub right they keep changing the name yeah Google Home Hub uh, it's it is the the the, the, the screen is Flutter and then uh, Stadia the new uh, game uh, console game application from Fl Fl uh, Google. They built their mobile application with Flutter. Uh, and then, you know, Google makes money from ads, right? Google ads. Uh, Google ads use Flutter for both their internal application and then for both for the application that the customer uses outside. Um, also, Fuchsia, I don't know if you ever heard about Fuchsia. So it's the new exciting experimental project from Google. It's an operating system. There's a small part who has been open source and the user interface for Fuchsia also is Flutter. So actually using and learning Flutter right now is also preparing you for the future technologies as well. So it will be a lot of advantage for you if you know Flutter right now. And if you want to see more applications built with Flutter, we have a showcase page. Uh, you can go there. There are some featured apps. You can see the experience uh, with Flutter in there. And let's say that you really like Flutter. You loved my presentation and you decided to use Flutter. So what are the ways? Uh, if you have an idea, if you have any business, uh, you can just start building your applications from scratch and you will have an iOS, Android, web, maybe in the future desk, desktop applications with Flutter. Or you don't have to build an entire app, but if you need a prototype, uh, you just like, uh, you can create your prototype with Flutter, or if you have an Android app, or or if you don't have and if you don't have an iOS, and if you need that, uh, instead of building a different app, you just create your app with Flutter, and you have your applications working all all the platforms. Or if you have an Android app, and you can start adding pages into your existing Android app with Flutter. 
So there's a team just working dedicated to this project in the Flutter team right now, and they're working really hard. There will be a lot of updates with that, so you will be able to add Flutter pages into your Android app. And if you want to learn, uh, start learning Flutter, I think uh, the easiest way just going to the official documentation because they are very clear there are really clear instructions you just go and follow the things and then you will have a just sample application working on the ID and then you can uh, start adding on to that and a lot of resources of course in the documentation page as well and we have a YouTube channel so my team members are doing a lot of cool videos in that channel so boarding show is one of them so I really like this show because so these are two of my team members and they literally just come on the camera and they sit down and they start building an application so and it is a one-hour show so the thing is so you know usually in the demos Everything works perfectly, right? There is no error, no bug. Everything works. There is no crash at all. But the, in the real life of development, it's not the case. You crash a lot of things, right? On the, 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 you debug things. You cannot find things. And in this show, they are exactly what they are doing. They are building a real application. And sometimes they cannot find things. They go to Google. They search. They paste it. And then they try. It doesn't work. They debug. So you can see fair their faces. It is a real development experience and this is why this is a really useful show because it helps you it helped me to get over my imposter syndrome because the world is not perfect and this is exactly show showing this that and but if you don't like longer videos there are some shorter videos like widget of the week again it's on the youtube channel you can just watch a, a few minutes video and you will have an idea about the videos and and the beauty of Flutter actually comes from its community. So Flutter has a really strong community. For example, we have meetup groups like this, right? There's a Flutter meetup in Kisumu. There's another one in Netherlands, another one in Capital Region. And then a lot of, we have over 100 meetup groups all over the world. And these awesome people are bringing people together locally. They talk about Flutter, they build projects, they do a lot of things. And on the internet, on Stack Overflow, on the Flutter study group Slack channels, on Twitter, on GitHub, you will see a lot of people actually willing to help you. So if you have a question, if you just hit the wall, it is easy to find the answer in the Flutter because there are so many people in the community that are willing to help you. So this is the real beauty of the community. Flutter uh, comes from the community. And of course, we have a lot of contributors that uh, are creating packages or documentations and everything for Flutter. So Flutter is an open source project. And we also have a, called group, a group called Flutterista. I think I met some of you there. So this is a a uh, group for women and non-binary developers uh, so this is a support group we talk ev a lot of time we meet every month sometimes we talk about flutter sometimes we talk about the things we cannot do in the flutter sometimes other things to so just support each other uh, if you want to join this group i really encourage you to do so uh, please send a message to danielle or stephanie in this in the you will see on the slide on twitter they will add you to the group and we talk a lot, a lot of talk about a lot of cool stuff and of course there are so many updates going on on the flutter if you're familiar so right now there's this code band support for flutter um, this is a new playground code band now you can build like animations and do a lot of creative things and now you can do things with flutter and if you and if if you want to check out this, we announced it like two or three weeks ago on Twitter. There's an entire blog post about that. Um, so, and you know, I don't know if I can share this number, but right now there are like over 50,000 people are doing Flutter things on CodeBank. A lot of people are playing with that. And some people, some crazy people on Twitter, I don't know if you saw them, they cloned Netflix, Uber, and um, what else? Twitter on uh, just like CodePen, it works with Flutter on CodePen and they clone the entire application. So it is a lot of fun. It gives you a lot of creativity and then experience. I encourage you to try that. And then of course, PWS support, we just like announced this uh, two weeks ago. And, and then uh, I cannot read. Okay, sorry. 
debugging debugging and expression evaluation again so again this is an entire blog post i'm not going to spend too much time for that but you can go and check out the blog post every wednesday we um we announced some of the cool things like this with a good flutter good news wednesday hashtag and please follow that hashtag and every week uh, you will see a lot of fun thing and uh free flutter course um so this is a course created by a uh, Angela in App Brewery. If you, this is a really cool course, usually it was not free, but we announced it for free. Um, so if you want to start learning, uh, you can go and check out this course. It is a really nice start as well. Um, so this is all from me about Flutter right now. Um, I hope you're not bored, you're not sleeping. And, and if you have any questions, I'm happy to take them. Thank you for the presentation. Of course. Should I stop? Mean my... I, I yeah. have a question for you. Of course. Will you do will you do a presentation like this for our meetup? Of course, yeah. I have <laughs> I'm oh, why not? Oh my god, I'll be really happy. I I don't look presentable, that's why I don't put the camera on. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. I that's... just like you in the morning. <laughs> I know. I will write you an email. Thank you so much. Of course, sounds good. Yeah, nice to see you. Great presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have oh, I have people. a question. I don't know if I can ask. Hi, sure. Yep, go ahead. Sorry. Okay, uh, let me allow Joanne to go first. I think Juan wants to ask a question. So oh, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to say you already mentioned like uh, there's going to be something announced. Uh, uh, Google I.O. is not, not uh, happening, of course, this year, but always there's a lot of work towards Google I.O., right, from all the teams. So yes. anything exciting coming up? <laughs> uh, okay, let's keep this here, literally yes. just here, okay? Yes, we are also going to have uh, some uh, online things for Flutter in yep. in in next couple of weeks, right. and the announcements will actually be do, done in either next week or the other week. So there will be some things. So please stay tuned. I cannot say anything yeah, but, else, okay. but, but yes. then the question is, I can, I un totally understand that you cannot say anything, anything of course. But you may. So where can we? What can we monitor to you know to be uh, to to be the first row? of these announcements? What do we follow? It's like Twitter or? Yes, Flutter, Twitter, uh, it would be the best address yeah. right now. I'll keep an eye on it. <laughs> of course, yeah, this is going to be so exciting. Yeah, please follow. Yeah, looking forward to it. Great. All right, all right. I want to ask a question. Sure. Um, I, I'm a student. I just started learning Flutter a few months back. But most times I find it, I find my, I find dead ends when I get to the back end part of Flutter. Like, I don't know, I, I get to, I'm only stuck when I'm trying to grab the concepts of back end, like connecting to Firestore, then maybe doing authentications, then database, trying to do crude, um, create um, the crude stuff on the database and all. So I get stuck sometimes. I don't even know. The lines of course to write and it's always getting annoying and frustrating and I, like <laughs> sometimes i just be like it's coding really for me the next day i'll just come back and start again yeah. so i don't know if there's a way i can learn those concepts maybe bit by bit to understand them better so that's just what i want to ask um i see yeah it's like it is like like all the things that we are starting learning a new technology usually it's like it's it doesn't seem to be a easy way right um but uh flutter like is comparably to, to other technologies it is actually easier to learn so this is one thing i can say but it is really normal that sometimes you like there are some things that that is really annoying and uh, if you're asking some like resources like what can i do or where can i follow is this what you're asking yeah i just want to know the things i can do maybe resources or videos or something that can actually take it bit by bit where i can understand all this architecture like using providers then mm -hmm. because some I, I know the basics of provider right 
but I don't, I was not thinking, okay, what if I want to use it for a complex app? How am I going to write it? And the top level of it was going, was making me go crazy. I was just like, let me just calm down. So yep. that's what I need. Um, so one thing, one of my team member, Philip Hracek, he is, he has done uh, some talks on the state management. Uh, for example, if this is like, if you want to look at some state management approaches and if you search for state management approaches uh, uh, for Flutter, you will see a lot of good resources and some example people uh, used and cr uh, created examples. I encourage you to look at them. And for like Firebase, Firestore integration, I think we have a documentation for that. Uh, for Flutter and Firebase integration uh, on the Google uh, Flutter documentation. Uh, you can, I will also encourage you to look at that documentation. And if sometimes if you need, sometimes it is just asking one person may really help, right? It is just like you keep reading the articles and everything, but you, you just don't see that thing. Sometimes talking to other people actually really helps. So there's a, uh, if you go to community page on the flutter.dev, there is an email group that a lot of people just ask very simple questions and a lot of people answer them. And there's a Flutter study group Slack channel. Also, there are a lot of people, they are helping each other. I will also uh, want to say that just look at them, just talk to someone because I, there, there are a lot of people that are willing to help in the Flutter world. Uh, other than that, they're just like those resources, just keep reading. And then uh, talk to other people. I'm sure you will see a lot of help. All right, thank you. Uh, you talked about the Slack channel for the Flutter group. Is there mm -hmm. a way we can join that? The Slack uh, group for the Flutter. Let me see it's, if it is listed. So it is actually run by the Flutter community members. So let me see how you can join that. Yes, OK. So. I just pasted the link here. If you go to this page and if you scroll down, you will see the Slack. Uh, and then you can, if you click on that, it will say how to join that group. All right. Thank you very much, Nia. Yeah, thank you. Of course. Thank you so much. Yeah. Good luck with that. With that. Yeah. And share with us what you do. Like we would love to see well, how are you doing. Yeah, I want. I have one last question. Mm -hmm, sure. I'm dealing. With, I'm dealing with a lot of um, imposter syndrome. Like I feel maybe I'm not. <laughs> I feel maybe I'm not learning enough, or my growth is slow. And actually, I won't lie to you. That has, I don't know. It has really tampered with me. So most uh, times, I feel like, am I doing enough? My growth is slow. <laughs> what is actually wrong with me? It's, I, I was like, okay, I'm not like, it's not like I'm dumb or something. Why am I not getting these concepts and all? So it's actually really, I don't know how to deal with that actually. So most times I, I always, I'm always tempted to ask when I meet people that are really experienced in the field, okay, how long does it take to yeah. learn for that? Though we have a lot of constraints here, like in Nigeria, because of data, like internet, connection to internet and electricity. But removing that, I still feel maybe I'm not doing enough. I'm not learning fast enough. So I don't know. How can I deal with that? Yeah, you're not alone. Don't feel like, don't feel bad about that. It is how we feel usually, right? Like when we actually did, are doing things that we haven't done before. So it is very normal to feel that. But also like this, don't allow this to block you. Because we all, we were all there. We are all there. We all always like feel that oh am i doing enough over oh, there are uh, people look at what they're talking i don't even understand what they're talking and am i going to be like them and don't compare yourself with other people so just do things that you like and just keep doing that and keep doing that and you will see that you will actually have a lot a lot of progress and you will be creating a lot of good things and don't feel bad about that hey i have a question sure hi Hi, um, a great presentation, by the way. Great, thank you. All right, um, so my question is uh, about Flutter for the web. Mm -hmm. um, is it trying to replace um, JavaScript or uh, is it being a web, uh, is it being a framework or it's being a language or how really is the approach? Okay, this is more of a pass, uh, opinionated. 
So is it more of replacing JS or it's more of a framework for me to use for the web? Um, so, OK, these are hard questions. First of all, this is not trying to replace anything. So there are a lot of technologies that you can use, uh, you can try. And of course, you should pick whatever works for you best. And Google is just offering you different options, right? And then you just like, and Flutter and Flutter for Web is one of them. And the beauty of the Flutter for Web is now you can you can create a mobile application and then from the same code base, you will actually have a web application and you can create really beautiful things about that. So this is the nice thing. And you use that programming language and it, it, it is really high performance. And, um, and this is an option for you. So if, if it works for you, if this is what you need, if, if it, uh, it is overlapping with your experience, you can look at and choose uh, Flutter for web. And uh, so uh, it's not like trying to replace or anything. And there will be more updates about Flutter for web right now. It is in the kind of really development and you will hear more things. Uh, it will be there will be a beta version and then production version coming in the coming months and we will have more information about that then and even I don't have right now. <laughs> All right, uh, thank you. I'm sorry for ambushing you with that question because I'm really struggling to understand whether Flutter is a framework for the web or it's trying to be a new language for the web. So that's just the clarity I wanted to get, but it's okay. I can be patient to understand it later. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh, hi. 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 Uh, yeah, that was a nice, nice presentation. The agent late, but uh, I am grateful for the much that you are able to give us. Okay, I'm I'm new in Flutter, but um, I'm um, I'm uh, I'm actually right now like two days old. I published my app on Play Store. That's oh, great. Made in, yeah. Congratulations. And, um, That's awesome. So how was your experience? Um uh, it, it wasn't easy. It's been uh, like a month doing it from scratch and uh, trying to look for a few bits of code from different places combining to make the app actually work like the one that I'd made using Java. So even right now, I'm also trying to, uh, I, I've also submitted it on Apple Store. So I hope it gets through the review. Yep. And then uh, I'll, be, I'll be the happiest person around to have an app both for Android and iOS. So um, my question is, um, I have two questions. First question is uh, about Android X. Um, uh, they tried, first of all, I tried to create an app from scratch and uh, it was having problems building. And I looked online, I found there was an article on Medium that was telling us that uh, there was a, a problem with Android X and we can mm -hmm. still just use the normal Android. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, so looks like Android X is, uh, is still unstable and flatter. So I needed to know, mm, is it, is it going to be stable soon or it's me who has not updated to some latest SDK? And then um, another question is uh, about analytics and uh, mostly crash analytics. You see on, uh, on Android right now, if you are done an app with Java or Kotlin, the analytics, they are very specific when there is uh, something that you need to look at. It even gives you a specific code or line where it's crashing. Mm -hmm. um, do we have the same for it is still under development such that I will, I will know when my app crashes and where it's crashing? <laughs> um, OK, I'll start with the second one. So I don't know the answer, first of all. <laughs> the one thing. And so, yeah, I'm sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I really don't know about this. So, or if, if does anyone know about the the this in the call? 
No? Okay, I'm sorry. Um, so I don't know, I can look at that and I, we can also share this on the meetup page, but I don't know. And then for the Android question, and again, yes, we just shared something to because there was some uh, problem with Android X and then we shared the instructions how to get around that. And then uh, when you're, if you're asking when this is gonna be uh, stable for that, I don't know that answer either. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Jack, it also depends on, on which channel you are, right? So you, when you do Flutter channel, you can see which channel you're on. So you're either on stable or beta or uh, master. So it also, it can something can be fixed in, in the master branch or in the beta branch, but not in stable yet. So uh, if, you, if you look at or Google your issue or if you see an issue on the, on the, on the uh, on the Flutter uh, GitHub project, then uh, you can see where it's where it's fixed, and you can switch to that channel. So if you type in the console Flutter channel, you can see which ten channel you are on, and then maybe switching to a less stable channel will help fix your problems. But I don't have any problems with Android X, so uh, and I'm on beta now. Thanks. You just answered the question that I was having. Yeah. Okay. All right, thanks, Johan. So as you can see, like Flutter real community is really awesome because you can always find an answer from someone. So thank you for that. And um, so f don't feel bad with Flutter, they will all, you will always find an answer from someone. Hey, Nili, I have another question. Of course. So uh, do we have opportunities in Google at the moment for Flutter developers? uh is it like is flutter hiring developers is this what you yeah. say yeah ah uh, um yeah of course yeah flutter team is growing a lot uh we, there were a lot of new people joined the team in 2019 so right now for 2020 everything is like we don't know if google is hiring new people <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of things announced about the like general hiring situation right now about Google because of the uh, shelter in place, COVID and everything. And But of course, the Flutter team is growing a lot. Uh, I don't know if there is any active opening right now in the Flutter team. And the best place to look is the careers.google.com. Uh, if there is an opportunity, there will, it will be there. Um, we also have a lot of interns every year. And intern applications are usually opening in, the, in December for next year. For example, if you want to apply for 2021, you should apply in December and there will be some interviews and we usually have the interns in in the summer um yeah if you see a flutter opening on the careers.google.com you can reach out to me i'm happy to refer you or help you with the process or answer your questions right about that thank you uh, I have a question of no. course okay um hey, i wanted to ask for your um twitter and you and number two how can we join as an intern as um in google like joining the flutter team as an intern then what are the things you need to do like what are the requirements and all to be an intern so hmm. that's just what i want to ask yeah, so intern applications are Google is very actually similar to like job applications. You do you go through the real interviews for that, and um, the applications are usually open available in December for the other year. So you just you do your application, and then uh, there will be some interviews. Some if you are applying for a software developer internship position, there will be some coding interviews. And what I heard is those coding interviews are really similar to Google job application. So for that, there are a lot of resources on the internet, how to prepare Google coding interviews. There are some like sites like LeetCode, and you do a lot of algorithm. And um, 
I would encourage to look at those uh, things to prepare for the interviews. There are a lot of example questions and solutions. And other than that, um, of course, being an active member in the open source community, sharing your projects on GitHub or contributing Flutter itself or contributing other people's projects or creating packages and showing this kind of some active contributions in the community are useful because people are, are looking at that and but other than that the first step is just the the, the application and interview so prepare for those interviews okay yeah. do you have to really know Flutter well before you are able to apply and also you've not talked about your um twitter and um, so do you have to know Flutter be to, to be a Flutter intern? It doesn't work like that. First, you have to go to, through the general interview process for any kind of um, development internship role at Google. So it is independent from Flutter or web or Android. So you have to go through the coding interview. And it is usually some algorithm questions. And when, yeah, algorithm and data structures, as Robert said. Thank you, Robert. And if you go through those interviews, and when you go to second step, and then they're asking you, okay, what do you want to work on? And then they start looking at your, oh, what did you do with Flutter? Like, what kind of contributions you did? What kind of projects you did? And what do you want to do? for Flutter with Flutter, and that comes second. But first, you have to go through the coding interview. Yeah, uh, can you give Shai Shai, uh, I, I think I'm mentioning the name right. Can you give her or him a um, chance to speak and ask a question? Oh, of course, sorry, yeah, go, oh, sorry. Yeah. yeah, so there's a question on the chat. Huh, okay, how to resolve the payment gateway integration? Uh, using a web app web. Okay, also this is something I won't be able to help. Anyone in the chat can know about that? I'm sorry, Shai Shai. Um, I'm, I, I don't know the answer about that. Yeah, this, this typically, Nancy, you can, you can ask in the, in the Slack groups, right? Yes. So, so if you have like a couple of hundred people, there's bound to be somebody who was, who's, uh, be able to answer the question since, since i'm speaking um, yeah, um how can we get or how is the flutter engineering team in touch with the community so how do they know what we developers uh, need because uh, recently something like network requests were mm -hmm. were uh, being made available in the dev tools and it's looking good but i was like i would like to to have more uh, mm -hmm. how do you say it so how how do we know about these what's coming up in the future, oh. like what, we're, what we're working on, and how can we help as developers to give you feedback on on those improvements? Sure, great question. Thanks for that. So, there are a few things. First thing, uh, how the so how we look at the feedback and like. Uh, some or bugs or like what like how do we how do we decide what to, for, to add or fix first right it's github so usually uh, people file an issue on github and then if gets good votes so we are looking at the voting numbers if the voting is high uh, this is the prioritization for us so this is one thing uh, and then second thing is every month or every three months, there is a developer survey. It is shared on the Flutter Twitter channel. We ask a lot of feedback in that. And it is literally even free text questions. The engineers, the PM teams literally read that. So like it's line by line. And then if we feel, oh, this is a big pain right now or big request right now and then the, it, it is very obvious it is clear it's it can be seen but before that the github voting and filing issue is the best thing to reach out and then another thing that you will you can see a lot of engineers on the gitter channel uh flutter let me also put the link there can I share yeah. my experience related to this? Uh, yes, please, please go do, do. Yeah. So last year I attended the GDG Leeds Academy. 
and I had uh, suggested the, and everything I suggested is already released now. So I'm really happy. <laughs> so I can say I, uh, we had the lots of problem at the time in the beginning when it started last year with the installing uh, Flutter, it took us like a lots of time. So the team uh, revised the installation. Now it's like uh, five minutes. It's like a, a lightning uh, <laughs> process, no more hours. Uh, and another thing that I suggested to have a um, code sandbox box, and now we have code pen and dark pen that are working because many times you set up a user, set up their computers, but it takes you like an hour to, and after you have from the meetup, you have another hour uh, left to do the code lab. So it was a lot of uh, time wasted with installing and setting up computers. So the code sandbox now, especially with coronavirus that we are home, it's easier to do these code labs online and help people then uh, uh, solving their issue, computer problems issue. So even that is a way as a GDG to reach out to the Flutter team uh, and know the problems that your community have to suggest. So I think that worked for me also. Yep, that's, that's great. You're right. So yeah, yeah, go ahead. Okay. I just said thank you. <laughs> okay, of course, yeah. Thank, thank you. you for that. Yeah. So one thing is, Flutter team is really, really uh, listening to community and people, and then they are trying to understand all the feedback and pain points. The one thing is just like, so what should we? So the deciding what should we do next? Should we just like do the new things? Should we just like try to address those pain points? Of course, it is hard. But yeah, uh, if there's an issue on GitHub, which is a high vote or and like developer surveys are the best ways to give that strong message right now. Also, Nila, uh, yes. at the time I asked for a course because we didn't, I didn't have any course. I was learning all this YouTube uh, and mm -hmm. uh, this year actually they released, they gave me a course, that one from App Brewery. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, now they release it that everybody can take it. It's free. It's like 10 projects or something. Uh, if you look in Medium, I think is that article that Flutter team released this uh, brewery course for everybody. For yes, free. you're right. Yep, yep. That's a great course. I just pasted the link in the chat as well. Uh, if you can start with that. All right. Any other question? Yes, I have a follow-up question on what Maureen asked. Of course. Yeah, um, about jobs. So is there any dedicated um, channel where we can look for flatter jobs, not really at Google, but mm -hmm. anywhere in the world? Uh, y yes, okay. there is. Um, again, so thanks to our beautiful community. There's a lady, I think she's based in London. She created a Flutter Jobs website. So I just pasted the link there. You will see a lot of Flutter Jobs posted on that website. Great, thank you. Of course. All right, any other question? Anything, any feedback? Thank you for the presentation. It was a good one. Of course. All right. Thank you so much. So do I need Android Secrets to develop in an app in Flutter? Um, so um, actually, Flutter is uh, you, you, do, you will develop Flutter with a different programming language. And there is, um, of course, there are a lot of modern programming uh, development um, how to say ap approaches like reactive programming and everything and of course these are general things uh, but if you don't know Android before you can start building a Flutter developer a Flutter application uh, so you don't have to know Android before of course if you know it is better you're familiar with the, some programming concepts but you don't need to know Nilay, thank you for this great presentation. I really oh, enjoyed it. Thank you so much. It was great seeing everyone. Thanks you for your time. Thanks, Nilay. We appreciate your presence. Okay. Thanks.
Thank you so much. Bye bye. Bye everyone. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye Have everyone. Bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. Bye.